entertainment on a Tuesday night. Right, we're going to give a little shout out to our sponsor and then we're going to start debating round number 24 of the Betfred Super League. Let me add a little bit of spice. So there you go. If you like a little bet, you like your hackers, all of that kind of stuff, get over to Rugby League Three Quarters on Facebook. Uh, get involved in that community as well. I think the puns line needs to go. My apologies. That should have gone a long, long time ago. Don't make a saying about Field. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Jai Field had a good game. He was certainly in the mix. Judson rolling out of the red carpet for Mark Hill and for Dave Smith. This is the uh, Super League League table. The Robins and the Warriors, both on 36 apiece. They're right at the top. I mean, let's be fair, with the exception of three teams, everybody's standing on the shoulders of Giants here. Um, anyway, uh, the, Warriors, <laughs> the Warriors, 36. Wolves there in third on 34. Uh, the Red Devils, you know, is that enough? Possibly is, you know. Possibly is. Really pleased with Paul Rowley on his side. Then it's the Saints and Dragons. If the Leopards were to beat the Wire... This weekend, they would, for me, be in the six. I think one thing's... Uh, if anything is a certainty based on good form, it would be Wigan going to the Dragons and getting a win. Uh, so that could lead to the Leopards certainly being in the six if they turn over the wire this weekend. Uh, very, very interesting time. Really interesting times here in the Betfred Super League. And what a round of fixtures, ladies and gentlemen, we've got. Leopards, Wolves, what a way to start the week. I mean... You know, two belting games there. Leopards, Wolves, Robins, Red Devils. Two great matches there. FC Tigers. You know, I think this is an important game for FC. We'll get into it in a minute. But, you know, they don't want to be finishing bottom. And looking at their remaining fixtures, it's possibly they would cite as being one of their best chances for two points. If they don't take this one, I think uh, that could be their wins over for the season. Sorry, uh, all FC fans out there, which could leave the door open for London. Uh, the Giants taking on the Saints, of course. Dragons going up against the Warriors. And then the Broncos, who cannot be underestimated by the Leeds Rhinos. They are in there as well. Now, I know you're all interested, so let's just do it. The man at the top of the screen who was giving it big. Oh, he was giving it big. Oh, yeah, but be here now, ladies and gentlemen. Be here now. Don't go away. Don't go away, Joel. Don't go away. Okay, because this is the prediction league. And Mr. Skulls has fallen like a stone. He is now second bottom. It's an absolute travesty. Come on, big fella. What have you got to say for yourself? There's still four games left, and there's plenty, <laughs> there's plenty of points up for grabs. There is, mate. I've, a good I've been at the top of the t table nearly all season. Yes, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm going to gamble. Get back there, don't you worry. Yeah, ask Alex Sharp, mate. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. His Lee's Rhinos know all about that. But Greg <laughs> Nixon, I've got to tip me out to you. Oh, Whoa, he's come from nowhere, Mr. Nixon, even though he looks like Gary Schofield on the, on the graphic. Uh, <laughs> well, he's, he's in second. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. Yes. Wow, that, that, that's certainly a turning, that is. Wow. Well, you know, what? I, I I don't mean, Joel, really... Joel, I've got to ask, where did it all go wrong? I know. Where did it all go wrong? The thing is, I've, I've got the most right, the right teams most. It's just the right team and score that I've tailed off with. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I've got 49 there, Joel. <laughs> well, all I will say is the stars are about to fall. That's what I'm going to say. You know what I mean? Nick needs to start calling him Lila. Dear God. Anyway, not to worry. Our Joel, I'm sure, will give it a good... He'll, he'll bounce back, Joel. I've no doubt about it. Bounce back ability. Remember those great oh, days? Who was that? Pardew? It was Pardew, wasn't it? Bounce back. Soccer, no, soccer AM, bounce back ability. Bounce right? back ability. Yeah. They were the days. Chamberlain. Oh, <laughs> Helen. Fantastic talking Wendy sport. Ball day. You're talking Wendy Ball. Unlike know, the I Giants. Am. Unlike the That's Giants. I'm going to go down fighting. Imagine, imagine us doing rugby AM. Oh. Get, that, get that comment up from Ian Judson. Hey, us doing us doing rugby AM. I'm putting a I'm putting a bet on Steph to win the prediction league. Well, there you go. There you go. Imagine we could we could bring like that tonight. <laughs> into the, the catwalk, couldn't we? And all that. Ian, Ian step away from the Barian. Yeah, <laughs> step yeah, away from definitely. 
Wait, wait till he sees what I'm predicting on this week. <laughs> oh, yeah, it'll all change then. Right, let's get into the predictions. Right, okay, we're going to part the Oasis bit because after a while, it does uh, it does lose its uh, it does lose its humour, doesn't it? So we're we're going to slide away from the Oasis uh, puns and we're just going to now keep it purely rugby league. And we're going to start with the big one, and it is the big one. It's a massive one. It's the Warrington Wolves heading to the Lee Leopards. We're about we're barbecuing with Mr. Sale at uh, the Chateau on Friday afternoon. Afternoon. He's enjoying, you know, the barbie will be there with his T-bone steaks, showing us exactly what he looks like in the chef's hat. Uh, fantastic stuff. Uh, we'll be uh, very lubricated by the time we get to uh, the LSV. We're really looking forward to this one. As you can see in Super League Raw history, it's the Warrington Wolves who are seven two up. Uh, both of these two teams coming in with pretty similar records in terms of the form guide. Of course, Warrington, who can forget? Brilliant game. You know, at the Halliwell Jones Stadium earlier in the season, 16-14, that Matty Nicholson drive right at the death. Uh, you know, and you know, don't before we start, yes, there might have been a little knock on, but hey, <laughs> the hard day could didn't get a high shot either. You know, what goes around came around that day. But one thing's for certain, these two teams I think will produce a quality game of rugby league on Friday night. And let's not forget in this fixture, 2023, it was the Lee Leopards who won convincingly 30 points to 12. Uh, beating the Warrington Wolves, and if, if you remember, ladies and gentlemen, that was Josh Maguiregate. Oh yes, that was that night. Mm -hmm. uh, it's third against seventh, and, and you know what? Steph's been saying it all season. Look at the four, look at the against. Warrington to tap five nine two. Uh, Lee's four nine eight. Defensively very tight. Three three eight conceded for Lee. Three oh one for the Wire. The Wire go in slight favourites. Four to five. Lee are only eleven to ten. This is going to be a belter. I'm going to go to Joel first. Because you are completely neutral on this one, Joel. This is Friday night fair of the highest quality, isn't it? We're not talking, we're not talking here, Big Matt Meals. We're talking the Savoy with Tom Jones in the boom next to you. That's how good this is. <laughs> this is going to be a great game. Uh, I'm really looking forward to watching this. Um, I think it's, it, it's it's got a lot of stake for different different things. You know, why are so close to the top? Two, it's just literally two points in it, so you're going to want to keep on to that. And then, but Steph, you know, your team, they've got every chance of being in the top six and, and staking a good claim there, so uh, there's, there's a lot into it. Um, having that said, I've, I've got it very, very, very close, and it, it's just literally down to the for and against that sway, sways it for me, uh, why I want to wait, but that is just based off the defence and attack. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I can say we've done a hat-trick. Carl Shaw is the latest Super League Raw member. We're now three in on the evening. Who's joining the three lads? Come on. We need also our female viewers to get involved in this. We want a full, a full, you know, proper mix of rugby league fans. We know that this game is supported by just as many females as there are males. Let's get you all in there. Let's keep it uh, Let's keep it going. But yeah, one to wait, why? I can see why you're saying that, Joel. I really do. Gary Schofield, he's gone. He's gone wire 9 to 17. He's, he's, he has, has, has the fans form as well. They've gone wire. Um, as Leah at home, Greg, I'll go to you. There's no doubt about it. This, perhaps, arguably... The hardest game Warrington's got left in the regular season? <laughs> well, you would think so, wouldn't you? I mean, it's, it's yeah. up in the sky, this one. It really is. Um, I've been dropping him in all night. You've been missing him, Dave. Um, <laughs> for me, this is a tough one to predict because uh, probably Steph may disagree with me, but I think Lee have to win this one more than Warrington do. Warrington are assured top six. Yes, it'd be great to finish top two, top three. Um, but I, I think Lee, with with Leeds and, and with other teams, you know, looking over, the, you know, they're looking over the shoulders at teams like Leeds, who again, maybe putting a, a run together that, that will see them into the six, whether they deserve it or not, that's an argument for another day. And I'm not so sure whether, you know, they've got Asiata missing as well. He's a big miss. He's a big miss, Asiata. Yeah, he is indeed. Especially, uh, especially in the attacking phases. I mean, we know yeah, he puts it, a big it, shot on, but it's his link yeah. up play with Lamin it. Yeah, he's uh I I I'm not so sure whether that pressure might get to Lee. Um I'm sure Steph will disagree 
because you know they've been in this situation a few times over the last two years. Challenge Cup semi-finals. Maybe they weren't expected to win. Challenge Cup final was a kind of an even game. There's been games where they they, they needed to win. Um, this one, I think the pressure is the thing that will tell in this game rather than rather than where to, where rather than the talent on the pitch. And I'm going Warrington nine to seventeen. So there's a victory for uh, for Lee. <laughs> Warrington get nine to seventeen. Get champagne guys. Friday night. <laughs> So 9 to 17. Yeah. Well, 9 to 17. Well, there you go. Uh, that's all very interesting indeed. Uh, Mr. Sale, yeah, massive loss for you guys in terms of Asiata. But of course, that's the sign of things to come. You've got to adapt prior to 2025 without him anyway. Lachlan Fitzgibbon might be back for Warrington. Doubts over Jimmy Harrison. So it could be a, a one in, one yeah. out where Warrington are concerned we're hearing. Um, what's your thoughts, mate? Right. First things first, I don't know where this talk of stakes coming. You, you do realise I'm married with children. Can't afford uh, uh, stakes. Uh, no, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm really looking forward. We, we, we've all had this uh, fixture penciled in since the start of the season. Um, yeah. more, more so from a selfish Super League Raw point of view. And yeah, it's going to be a good night. We, we, we're going to enjoy the day. Because um, it's not just the night, it's the day. So God help anybody who sees us on uh, Friday night. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> just, just don't talk to us. We'll be talking broken biscuits. <laughs> um, I could very well be divorced by the end of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't, hey, don't you worry. I throw a good party at the uh, Chateau Sale. The Chateau so, Sale. Uh, we'll, be, we'll, we'll, we'll be having a good. The West Wing is well and truly open for this one. Um, <laughs> so no, it's it's going to be a cracking match, and I think you're absolutely right. Asiata is going to be a massive loss for us after just getting him back and into a bit of form. Um, we're, we're we're definitely going to miss him. Definitely, uh, yeah. and I think. The, the big one for me is how much do Warrington want it? Because Lee will definitely want it. It's, it's, it's probably our grand final, this one. Um, the Lee Sports Village is going to be an absolute cauldron for this game. And if, if Warrington don't think it is, just wait till Friday night because it's on the verge of a sellout already. Warrington are going to bring a massive crowd. Um, the, 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 the Lee public are definitely back in this one and it's uh, one we're targeting that uh, I, th I don't think it's a must win. Um, I think it's uh, if we've it, it, if we've got if we're going to have a really good if we, if we beat Warrington we're going to have a really really good chance of making the six. Yeah. Um, if if we don't win then we're going to be relying on other people. Yeah, um, I think that's the way I'm looking at it. But um, but yeah, it's going to be going to be a great game. I think is it the Sky game? Is it the one they yes. picked? Yes, yeah, oh, I'm sure it's Sky. Yeah. Oh, to a Sky Plus. The Sky Plus. This one is the the KR yeah. game on Sky. Is it? Yeah. That that that. Mm. Well, that's good because I can record that. So actually, I'm quite happy about that if it's on. Yeah, I, I think it's a bit of a shame it's not yeah. because, like I say, I think it's going to be an absolute, absolute cracker. This one, uh, it'll probably turn out to be a real damn squid now. And wait I think it'll be a good game. I think it'll be. I think it'll be a bruising game. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, and and I think it's going to say a lot about the the Lee side in terms of how much they do want the top six um, and how much they do want to send the players who've been with us for a long time now and been through the journey of the championship and uh, getting promoted and the Wembley and the Challenge Cup final who are now leaving us as better players, going to better things in the NRL. Uh, this is when these guys need to step up and show why they're NRL for me. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just hope it's a, it's, a, it's a real quality game and we get to enjoy it together. So which way are you going, mate? Oh, I've, got, I've got to go Lee, Ante, one to eight. You're going Lee, one to eight. And yes, you were. Yeah, you yeah, might be right, mate. You weren't hearing things, ladies and gentlemen, at uh, Chateau Sale. There's no stakes on the menu. We were expecting a la carte stale sale. And what we've got is Diggsy's Diner. Unbelievable. Oh. Unbelievable. There you go. Uh, right, let's get into the chat. Let's get into the chat. We're here all week. Phil Webster. Phil Webster. Alan, Alan David Meadows, Leopards by six. Hello to you, Alan. Alan. Phil Webster, Lee, one to six. 
Graham Parrish Lee by eight. A lot of love for Lee here. Andrew Robinson, another member, one to eight. The Leopards, Ian Judson's gone the Y917. No surprises. There she is, Nicola Burtonwood. She's here every week. A proud Leopard, one to eight. There you go. And she's hoping to see us there. Absolutely, Nicola. It'd be lovely to have a bit. Be careful beer. what you ask for, Nicola. Be careful what you ask for. Yeah, that's true. Phil Webb's the same recent history. Lee have had more pressure games than Wire. Agree or disagree, guys? What in, in well, I, well, I think since the, the players have come back for Lee, every game has had some riding on it. They were that far back, yeah. I mean, Warrington at the moment, I mean, for, for let's be fair, probably for four, maybe five weeks for me personally, guaranteed playoff rugby league. They did the hard yards early in the season, whereas Lee, because of the, the slow start they had, every game. They've had to be there, thereabouts, and and that's going to continue for the last four. So yeah, I saw. I get that. It's just the it's not about you, Steph. It's just the mental fatigue of that, you know. And, and that's another thing we've not spoke about. I think it's been it's been great what Lee are doing. They're on a great winning streak with just that Wigan defeat in the middle there, you know. But mentally, being at that level week in week out, so far out from the the playoffs. If you were to get in the playoffs, they've got to go again, haven't they? Yeah, and I think this is why it's game of the week for me because I think yeah. Warrington are nine from eight, Leah seven from eight. I think yeah. is the street that they're both on. So you're talking about the two of the most formed teams in Super League at the moment. A lot of I watch some other programs where they do power rankings and stuff, and and Leon Warrington are both in the top four. <laughs> And probably because it's at Lee rather than Warrington as well, should make it even more of a, an atmosphere and an advert for rugby. Um, you know, this should be prime time box office. You should even yeah. have to pay additional amounts on your Sky subscription for this one for me. One so, um, so it's definitely Warrington 50, Lee 10. If ever there's a shaker maker <laughs> at the weekend, it is the Warrington Wolves going to the Lee Leopards. I'm going the Y9 to 17. Uh, I, I just think, you know what, if these two turn it on, it was a great game at the HJ though, in early in the season. It was, and Lee should have won that. Had contentious decisions, it had brilliant yeah. tries. Great atmosphere, you know. The Lee fans were, were superb again. Um, really looking it's forward to me. really looking yeah. forward to meeting a few more be the Roars. They're always a, a welcoming committee. We saw plenty at Magic Weekend. Look it's it's going to be full on. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely. We could do a live before the game, maybe. You never know. Well, you know, weirder things have happened, Steph. Weirder things have happened. Right. So there you go, Lee Warrington. One thing's for certain, folks. Yeah. If it, if if it was me, if I weren't going the game. I'd be watching Warrington Lee on Sky Plus. I'd be recording KR Salford um, and having the best of both worlds this Friday night. I really, really would. I think it's going to be an outstanding night of rugby league football. Right, let's go to that game. The the Robins entertaining the Salford Red Devils. History 18-12 in the favour of KR. And there you can see it, KR. They're not on a five-game winning streak, ladies and gentlemen. They're on a seven-game winning streak. They've scored 220 points in those seven games and only conceded 58. It's title winning form. It's incredible what Hull KR currently are serving up for the Robins fans. There's no doubt. It's 1-1 one, one in the series if we count the Challenge Cup. Salford, as you know, won in Super League 17-10, only to be humbled 24-0 in the Challenge Cup at Craven Park. KR have won the last Three games at home against the Salford Red Devils. That's an interesting stat for you as well. It's first against fourth. Both of these, I have to say, I think Salford might already have done enough to secure playoff rugby league. I think one more win absolutely secures that for Salford. Who knows when that's going to come. The, the strike advantage and the defence advantage all with the Robins. 617 points this season. The Robins have scored 453. The Salford Red Devils defensively, the Robins are better. 274 conceded to 435. The Red Devils and no surprise, the bookies go 1-7 to seven on the Robins and rightly so. That's respect and we'd expect nothing less the form that they're on. The Red Devils though, we know, we know they'll have Lafay and uh, Oliver Partington back uh, for this one. Um, we know that they're a very competitive side when they can put their strongest side on the field of play. If you're looking for value, five to one, 
not saying it's going to happen, but five to one, wow. Especially when you consider what they did to Huddersfield at the weekend. Uh, I, I, but I do take Joel's point and Paul Rose as well. Salford weren't great, um, but they got the job done. Right, Greg, let's start with you. KR Salford. Um, two attacking teams. Yeah. Yeah. Teams and play the game the right way. Should be a very good game down there at Craven Park. Oh, it has the potential to be a fantastic game, like like the, the, the Lee Warrington game. Both these teams are coming off really big wins, confidence building wins against teams that, that, but against teams that really aren't on the ball at the moment in time. Saints um, allegedly have a couple of injuries. Uh, I think Sky mentioned it once. Um, so Saints are an injury, an injury hit team. So, you know, Hull KR did the job. Yeah. The Giants are low on confidence and Salford, Salford did a great job on Salford. So I can say it's two teams coming in who, yeah, will be have their confidence boosted by great wins, but weren't really tested, if I can say that. And I, I, if, I don't know, I just get a feeling about this one. Do I go with that feeling or do I go with common sense and, and, and back KR? If, the, if Hull KR were to slip up, it might very well be this one. And I'm going to get pelters for this one from all our Hull KR fans. I just get a feeling that... I, I, go on, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go Salford 1-8. to eight. Wow. We're doing Black Eyed Peas now. Yeah, going to be a good night. <laughs> i got a feeling... Yeah. Hey, yeah. He's, uh, a minute ago, he, a minute ago, he lost that. He had to pump up his chair. <laughs> Where is love? <laughs> right, Joel. Back to you. Uh, you know, I got your take on KR earlier in the show. Obviously, we also heard uh, what you had to say about Salford at the weekend. But this again, I think Friday night, all four teams. When they're on fire, when they're playing expansive rugby, they're wonderful to watch. These two could be just blinding fixtures. Um, can anybody stop KR getting the eight win in the row? Can Salford do it? Up until last week, Salford allowed as many points in as they did scoring. Yeah. Sure. So you've got to you've got to understand that. In fact, they might have actually even let in more than what they score. They did. So up until that last champ- week. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That champagne rugby style that they have, which is is wonderful to watch, it is great. It can be a massive downfall, especially when you come up against a team like Hull. Yeah. They are, of course, um, because their defence is incredible. You know, you look at the difference of the six hundred plus to the um, two hundred and something. I'll bring, you, I'll bring you back up for you, mate. Yeah, here it yeah, comes. please. Here it comes. There you go. There you go. Right, there you go, perfect. So, you know, you're looking at the 617 to the 274, it's just miles apart. And being at the Robin Stadium, being the form that they're in and the position they're in the table, I am going KR 18 plus. 18 plus to the Robins, yeah? That's right, yeah. Okay, before I bring in uh, Mr Sale, uh, let's get into the the chat. Garibo, hello Garibo, that's a new one on YouTube. Without Mikey, when they beat Salford 40-0. Uh, interesting uh, there. Uh, Mikey Lewis, of course, in great form this season. Uh, Andrew Robinson, KR 18+. plus. Rovers won the Challenge Cup 40 points to nil. Yep, so yeah, they did. My opponents are done away with that form. Uh, it's Joe Dal Green, uh, Salford 1 to 8. He's gone away. Salford, so John Wilkinson. This is interesting. Ian Rispin, Rovers 1 to 8. Hello, Ian. Good to uh, see you again, mate, my friend in the chat. Another Super League Royal member. Nicola Burton, Woodall, KR 917. Rovers 1 to 8. Ian Judson. He's gone in there. Robert Higson, KR 917. Mark Smith. A uh, new member, Super League Raw, 9-17, uh, the Robins. Uh, Craig Forth, 9-17, KR. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, a couple in there for Salford, not many. I think, the, you know, the, the majority going the way of KR. Gary Schofield's gone KR, 18+. plus. I'm going KR, 9-17. Uh, the Fans Forum are going 18+, plus for the Fans Forum. Steph, over to you. You can have the final say on this one. Where do you see this one going, mate? Um. I think this has got potential. If, if Lee Warrington isn't game of the week, then I think this potentially could be because Salford are that side who, you know, look, they, they looked very average against Lee, 
but then absolutely turned it on against uh, Huddersfield, you know, and <clears throat> go back to early in the season. I think, look at their home form. It's been absolutely incredible, hasn't it? Yeah, I think it's a record for Salford this year in terms of only home wins they've yeah. had. Um, the difference with this one for me is that they're going to uh, Craven Park, which as we all know, is an absolute, you know, I talked about the LSV being a cauldron. Um, that, that that place has been unreal this season. Um, they they really, really want that league leader shield for me. Um, you, can, you, can, you can just, you know, it's like shark circling with blood in the water, isn't it? Uh, yeah. KR, uh, that's how much of a cauldron it is at that place. They really, really want it. And um, I, I can't see them letting, letting the fans down in this one. I, I do think it's... Um, it's going to be a KR win. I've gone the same as you, Dave, 9-17. Yeah. Uh, I will just say, though, Alex, Alex has made the, uh, the, the the comment of the night, I think. <laughs> Which is that one, mate? <laughs> the, oh, <my> uh, Joel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex Shah, for those listening on the podcast, when uh, Joel did the Freudian slip over FC and KR, uh, <laughs> Alex said, uh, trust me, Joel, you, we all knew you didn't mean FC, which, uh, yeah, that's a, that's, a little, that's a little kick for... Uh, for, for them, but yeah, I mean, look, a lot of love with the exception of Greg. A couple of the fans for him there going the way of Salford as well. I just want to say a quick hello to another member, Richard. Uh, Richard's in the chat. We had a chat earlier on tonight. It, you know, I haven't, it isn't lost on me what's happened there tonight, Rich. Thank you very much indeed for continuing the support of Super League Raw. You know what I'm talking about, mate. Really, really appreciated. Right. Okay. Uh, let's now get into the next game. And the next game is going to be. An interesting one, uh, all FC, Casford, I said earlier on, I think from an FC perspective, this perhaps represents their best chance of a win between now and the end of the season. If they fail to take it, if London were to get one more win, they wouldn't finish bottom. So there is a narrative here for all FC. I think they need to come out big and firing, albeit, again, it's going to be a depleted squad. But look what they did to Wigan. So we need to take probably treat them with a bit more respect than perhaps we did last week because, uh, you know, we all expected a massive score and it didn't materialise and credit to the 17 players of Hull FC for, for, for really putting an effort in at the brick. Right, let's take a look at the head-to-head. Hull FC, 29-26 to 26 in the Super League era in favour of Hull FC. But that's quite damning, isn't it? These two teams coming into this game on five-game losing streaks. I think I put six there for, for Hull, and I, uh, and, and I do apologise for that. That isn't true. Their sixth game was a win. That was the Wigan Warriors one. But since then, they've been on a five-game losing streak. It's simple as that. Round 12 at the Jungle saw Caspian 30 points to 22. Who can forget Mr. Tex Hoy going in against his former club that day? Um, yeah, there you go. At the MKM Stadium, though, it's a decent record uh, for Hull FC. They're 14-8 uh, in total meetings against Castleford at the MKM. Uh, the last win for the Tigers, get this, against uh, FC was all the way back to round 20 of 2022, where they won 46-18 at the MKM Stadium. It's pretty tight. There's only 64 points separate them in terms of attack. Defence as well goes in favour of Castleford. So that both stats, attack and defence, go the way of the Tigers. But we must admit, in the main, Hull FC has improved that the season's gone on. A lot of the damage in their for and against was done earlier in the campaign. But equally, Castleford have also improved in the latter end of the season. This is interesting. Hull FC favourite, four to five. Didn't see that, lads. Didn't see that. Uh, Castleford Tigers, 11 to 10. That was roughly at about half past six this afternoon on Betfred's site. So they're pretty, you know, recent. They might have changed the change all the time. But that was about half six when that graphic got put together. So, Really surprised me that FC favourite for this one, Greg. Do you see mm. FC as favourites, Greg? <clears throat> Where do you see it? I think they'll be buoyed by their performance, or at least the scoreline at the yeah. weekend. They'll be buoyed by that. Yeah. Castleford will be upset by you know the scoreline against Warrington because it, it did flatter Warrington a little. Mm -hmm. uh, first half, Castleford were very, very competitive, albeit we were down to twelve. 12 men for 10 minutes of that half. Um, I I think Castleford will just have the edge. I'm going, I'm going Castleford 9 to 17. 
<laughs> Alex Sharp, Moy Martin and Litter will have the best chance in weeks to show their new coach uh, <laughs> why they are starters next season. <laughs> It'll be a good game, but I think Cass will win. Uh, for those of you, guys, that's the WhatsApp group. It's a great bit of banter. That is a spillover from the WhatsApp group. It's just... It's banter galore, but we've got to give it a shout out because that's quality bants from Alex Sharp there. Uh, over to you, Ian Judson. Returns. He's to, already returned. Return what's he said? What's he said? Here he is. Replied to Alex Sharp. Lit it out for the rest of the season, unfortunately, but he will be picked before <laughs> Hardacre next season. Of course he will. Of course he will, Ian. No doubt about it. Hardacre will be or the water carrier at Hull FC next year, according to Mr. Judson. Right over to over to Joel. Joel. Um, Hull FC, Cass, thoughts on this one, mate? It's hard to tell because FC have got more squad numbers than heritage numbers, I think. So, um... <laughs> oh, hang on. Hang on. I'm sorry to interject, Joe. Uh, I forgot about this. Have you noticed that the referees have heritage numbers? Have you picked that up yet? No. Yeah. No. They have got, uh, you won't believe it. So, the, you, won't, you couldn't have believe it, could you? The rugby league officials now have heritage numbers. What, is it on the shirt? Yeah, I mean, I don't know about you. I'm going out and buying a replica one straight away. Straight are, you away. Sure, are you sure it's not just a score they've predicted? No, no. Honestly, mate. <laughs> trust me, pal. Honestly, watch this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. You uh, were right. amongst you. The wow. referees, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The referees now have heritage numbers. Well, they'll, wow. have the names. they'll have the names on the back soon. Wow. They, they, they get medals at Wembley. They do. Mm -hmm. They do. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah, They've always done that, though. They've always Chris, had medals. Chris Kendall gets a medal at every home game at Saints, but that's another story. Anyway, come on. Joe, oh, he's gone in there, the grenade. The Saints fans now are flying in. Did you not see the weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a bit of bounce. Just a bit of bounce. That's all it is. Over to Joe. Carry on talking about FC and Cass, mate. Crack on. Yeah, if, if you look on paper, you, you, you'd say possibly it's a, a, a blow away for Cass, but it's never played on paper. Um, I think, though, the defence for Hull has just been that much more dire than Cassis has. Um, I know I can't talk, believe me, I, I understand. But I have got this as a close one. Um, I've got it as Cass 1-8. Um, just yeah. the fact that, because it's that hull. Yeah, yeah. Craig Forbes saying that Kendall would love his name on his shirt. And, um, well, you know, well, let, let's go <laughs> off. Now. You can imagine it, every time he goes to the video ref, he'd be like that, pointing to his shirt. <laughs> No, let, 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 let's lay off that. <laughs> it's only sport. It's only sport. Um, but yeah, all right. Um, I'm going. I'm going. What, sorry, Greg. What did you say for this one? My apologies. Cast nine to seventeen. Going nine to seventeen. Cast. I'm going cast nine to seventeen. Gary Schofield has gone cast one to eight. Uh, the fans form have gone eighteen plus two. The Tigers. That's a shout. Well, well, I say Cass. I said Cass. Cass. 17, oh, yeah. 18 plus fans for him. Wow. It's, not, it's not beyond the realms of... It's belief. not beyond the realms, but wow, is all I would say. I'm sure Lingard would take that uh, right now. Uh, Steph, I, I think Cole will put up a, a valiant fight. But I do. Yeah, they will. They will. I do. Steph, your thoughts? FC. Oh, Don Baker. What a tune. Let's get the, let's get the glow sticks out. Insanity. Take me to insanity. Oh, <laughs> that's tune coming in there from Don Baker in the chat. Oh, no, Friday night. We'll get that Friday night going. Yeah, let's get that oh, going. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Live Oceanic. from the chateau, insanity dance moves from the Super League Raw Posse. Loving that. Anyway, Steph, you're going to tell us about FC Cast? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think from from the uh, the stat you put there, the big thing that sticks out for me is the form guide. You know, I've not not seen that many L's since that Welsh team, the Welsh town that no one can pronounce um, <laughs> that one. So, um, but no, it's um, it, it is the a tail of the bottom of the half of the table into this one, and um, I think it's pride. Is probably what I'd, I'd the the word I'd use for this one. Who's going to play with pride and um, it could it could be costly based on my predictions further down the line yeah. for, for for FC. Um, I think they, they need to win this at home. I think that, I think for the fans they need to win it, um, and I do think they're going to put performance in. I I have actually gone against the grain here and gone Hull FC one to eight. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think Litton, Moy, and the boys will turn up for their places. Yeah, and I'm sure the out injured, apparently. Oh well, he's he's he, well, Hardacre's playing the next season or season. 
Yeah, yeah, he's out for the season, Lynn. Well, you know, you, you heard Steph say it there. Pride is on the line, and I'm sure you two out there oh. you agree with that one. Uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, we'll just whack that one in there just for, oh, the, uh, yeah, like just for the Irish fans amongst you. Outstanding stuff. That's what we like to see. Anyway. Uh, let's uh, let's move let's move swiftly on. Uh, the next game. Oh, sorry, I'm not t- actually. My apologies. Let's get into the forum very very quickly. Phil Webster. Uh, well, actually, no, that's the KR, KR game. My apologies. Mark Hill going hold by four. Jud- Ian Judson Hull FC ninety seventeen. Mark Smith cast one to eight. Robert Hickson cast one to eight. Cast golden point says Garibo. Sounds like a sweet there. Sounds like a sweet sweetie sweetie Garibo. Good lad. Joe Dal Green cast eighteen plus. Big shout from Joe. Uh, Ian Rispin cast one to eight, nine to seventeen. Craig Fourth, Nicola Burtonwood cast one to eight. Dawn Baker one to eight. I still not seen Dawn Kirby tonight. No. Oh, it's all oh, Ricky Sale and the lovely Ellie have gone cast eighteen plus. Big shout out <laughs> to Ricky Sale. It is her. <laughs> Made me jump. Her, then. her alone, the lady of the manor that will be going out and buying the ribeyes. We've got to keep her in good spirits. Uh is what I would say for Friday night. Uh but yeah there you go. That's where that's where well, we Golden go. Point. Golden Point's a good shout. It's a good shout. It's a great shout. It's a great shout. Yeah, we I'd, I'd, I'd agree with you there all day long. Right, let's get into this tasty little morsel. Uh the Catalan Dragons taking on the Wigan Warriors in Perpignan. Uh there you can see head to head very much in the favor of the Wigan Warriors 33 points to 13. And having your know, Wigan Everybody's saying that you know they're not playing as well as they were with you know since French has gone out, but they've won four on the bounce, ladies and gentlemen. You know, they're in decent form of the Wigan Warriors coming up against the Catalan side who only won two in the last five. Uh, as you know, I was there with Peter Mason, another Super League Raw member, Pete Mason. Uh, we were at the Brick Community Stadium for the first game in round 10, where if you remember, pretty close in the first period until Patrick Mago came on and uh, things started to turn around. Uh, some wonderful tries that night as well. The Harry Smith dink over the top and collected his own kick. Some really nice tries that night. 30 points to eight. Wigan strolled to win. It's much closer though in France. The Dragons winning nine of the tw- of the 20 contests. So almost a 50-50 split. Uh, <coughs> uh, last year, round 23. 34-0, the Wigan Warriors. Miski got a hat-trick that day. Uh, Miski's not in as good a form this year. Is this a game that maybe Miski uh, starts to, to show his worth? He's not... He's not. I, 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 have I heard a rumour that Miski's not playing this weekend? Well, he was 18th man last weekend. So, uh, like I say, whether, whether he was rested or whether that's the kick up the backside he needs, I don't yeah, know. I, I, I've heard somewhere, I might be wrong, surely our yeah. Wigan fans will, will let yeah, me know. Yeah, will tell us, yeah. He's not... He's not, he's not I, I've heard Miski's not playing this weekend. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, like I say, Miski last year was was phenomenal. It's it's been very lopsided this year. You know, the left and the right edge last year for Wigan was pretty pretty even in terms of strike rate. It's really biased towards the left hand side with Wardle and Marshall this year, without question. It's uh, it's second against sixth. I mean, Wigan, yeah, five hundred seventy one points scored this season's four hundred eight for the Casford Tigers. Uh, Defence three hundred for Wigan conceded three sixty two, and no surprises a four to nine on Wigan Warriors nineteen to ten. The Catalan Dragons for this one. I'm going to start with you, Joel, on this one, my mate. Uh, your thoughts, Wigan Warriors taking on the Catalan Dragons in Perpignan. Uh, can Catalan turn on the style? Usually when they're at home, you'd, you'd say so, re- you know, regardless of who they're going up against. I just don't see it because th- they're just really struggling. They're, they're really finding it hard to find the right combinations, who goes where. And... Um, Sad to say, the more they play Tio Farge, the worse they get. He's he's just not been up to the races at all. So, if it was at home for Wigan, I'd have said 18 plus, but I'm going to go 9 to 17 just because it's the travel. 9 to 17 to the Warriors, yeah? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy days. Uh, Gary Schofield, he's gone 9 to 17. I'm going 9 to 17. Um, so, too's the fans for him. That's where they're at. Uh, we'll now go to yourself, Steph. Uh, Wigan Warriors, Catalan Dragons. Yeah, I think we, we've talked a lot tonight about you know teams smelling blood and you know really wanting to put put a a marker down. I think um, I think Wigan are going to want to do that in this game. I think Catalan have got a lot of injuries. Not to use the excuse that a lot of teams have used this season, but they have got a lot of injuries. Uh, Nick has gone, hasn't he, for the season? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's, it's one after the other at Catalan at the moment. Um, they're, they're, they're a team in free fall for me. 
Um, I'm, I'm hoping our borough neighbours do us a massive favour and put a cricket score on them, if I'm being honest, uh, in this one. Um, a bit like the earlier in the season, we're going to take, and you've got it there on the screen, a massive following there. Not yeah. quite as good as Lee, though, I don't think. That's why I put it up. I thought you not, 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 not quite yeah, as good. Well. Uh, but um, no, I'm sure they'll be having a, you know, you know my love for Perpignan. I'm sure the Wigan faithful will be having a great time over there. And I would like to say safe travel to all the Wigan fans going out Absolutely. there. I, I, hope, I hope you have an amazing time. It's it's a brilliant place. Yeah. Enjoy your fun in the sun. And uh, you're going to come back with an 18 plus points win on this one, boys. Big win for Steph Sale there. So, uh, and Greg, what you, over to you last on this one, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm, I agree with Steph. Um, 18 plus Wigan. Wow, yeah. uh, and I think, you know, Catalan, I've got to fear for their, their top six future. I really do. Uh, you know, and, and we, we talked about the coach for, for Giants next year. You know, if, if Catalan slide out the six, it might very well be McNamara going mm. to uh, to the Giants. Yorkshire, uh, good show. So, I'm going Wigan 18 plus because I yeah. think Catalan are shot. Yeah. I think confidence is low. They've got lots of injuries, as, you, as you've said. Um, Farge is not firing. No. Rouge, Rouge is their best player by, by far over the last five, six games. But he can't do it on his own. No. I, I think um, Artem Morg's got to step up. Is, is, he, yeah. is he playing? He's got to step up. He's, he's, he's been playing play. standoff, yeah. He has been playing standoff. I thought Ross as a Rouge was, 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 was played yeah. well against Leeds. Yeah, the, the problem, costume's the problem, good. The problem is with with um, Morg. He's he's a fullback. He's yeah. not standoff. He's not, he's not a standoff. standoff. No, uh, and Rouge is playing well at fullback, and that's the problem they've got. Yeah. Um, so I yeah I think we're we're gonna go on a gonna win eighteen plus. Well, there's a few going for Catalan. Graham Parish. Hello, Graham. Hope you're well, mate. Catalan by eight. Mark Smith, uh, new Super League World member. Did I mention that? Uh, he's uh, he's one to eight. Uh, there uh, for for the Catalan Dragons. Uh, apart from that, pretty much everybody going the way of Wigan. I think, you know, uh, Daz Dean uh, um, makes a really good point. They haven't replaced Toby King. That's where the balance has gone. Kieran yeah. has not replaced King. Uh, he's, you know, we all had a lot of time. I mean, you know, there was a massive debate at the end of last season. Kieran, Dream Team, not. Was it Wardle, King, Kieran, which of those three? Massive debate. He's been well short of that standard, Kieran, this season. Matt, well, well short of that uh, season. Um, he's had, he's had a busy Graham. season. Hello, Corey. New name in the chat. He hopes to see 1,500 miserable faces come on cats, is what he's Le, saying. Le Miserable. Le Miserable, miserable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring it. Bring them home. <laughs> uh, don't don't look down on cats. Come on. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, Kieran, going back to Kieran, he, he's had a bit of a bit, he's had a bit of a, a bitty season. Yeah. Inju injuries, suspensions. Yeah. And he's, he's not managed to get into his flow, I don't think. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying you know, that. You know, there's a lot of expectation on his shoulders. He's, he's going to the grand final winners. He's going to a team with with, with success and, and with, with a lot of success. And sometimes the Wigan fans can be a little impatient as well. So, you know, I think next season, if they stick with him, I think we could see the best of Kieran next season. We'll have to wait and see. There's no doubt about yeah. it. Harry, of course, Harry Smith out still. He'll be back next week. Peter Mason, good to see you in the chat, Mill Mucker. I hope you're well over there in Belarus. If that's if you're back, uh, I don't know if you're still over here. If you are, I hope uh, everything has gone well. Uh, Again, good, you know, good to see you at Magic, my friend. You know what I'm talking about, Mr. Mason. My thoughts are with you, sir. I hope everything has gone well. Right. Uh, so there you go. We're now down to the final two games. Joel is back. Outstanding. Just in time, sir. Just in time. We've only got two more games to discuss, and we're going to go to Joel's wonderful uh, Huddersfield Giants. Oh, there's, a, there's three words you don't hear often. Uh, but anyway, that's by the by. Let's go to let's go to, to the Giants. They they will entertain the Saints. Uh, do you know what, lads? Stranger things have happened, and I tell you, the interesting thing about McNamara and Wellens. This was interesting at the weekend. Wellens post KR defeat didn't pull any punches. Questioned his senior pros, really got into their ribs. Matt Namara, cool as a cause yet, backing his players, saying that he trusted them. Two very different styles. Which one will pay off? 
Did they actually should should it have been roles reversed? Did Welland should Wellens have put an arm round and should McNamara put the size ten up the bum? I don't know. We're going to find out in the next couple of weeks. Anyway, Giants thirteen to forty eight in the favour of the Saints in history of Super League. The form guide. Well, Saints are off the back of two losses. At least others can say it's only the one. You know, uh, every cloud and all of that. Um, in twenty twenty four, it's two nil to the Saints. The last home will. Oh God, Joel, look away now, Giants fans. <laughs> Look away now. The last win at home for the Huddersfield Giants versus the Saints in Super League. Round 16 of 2017. Since then, they've lost six in a row at home to Saints. Nobody can forget round two this year when Saints turned on the style. Some sensational tries Saints Benison, uh, for Saints. Benison, Wellsby, Knowles that day were unplayable. If you want to go back, the highlights really are superly raw. We were waxing lyrical that week about how good Saints were in attacking phases. Round nine, much closer. 13-12. Huddersfield should have won had it not been for Jake Connor turning his back at the play the ball. It was a disgrace. Anyway, moving on. Uh, that's, uh, that's by the by. It's nine for games fit. Um, 524 attack for Saints, 402 for the Giants. Defense 550 conceded for the Giants, 340 for the Saints. Saints 4 to 9 on 19 to 10, the Huddersfield Giants. Greg, stranger things. Strange things. Strange things. What are your thoughts? Oh, what are my thoughts on this one? The Giants, as somebody's put in the chat, the Giants owe their fans a response. Yeah. Is that response going to be good enough to beat Saints? Um, Saints have, I don't know if you know, but Saints have got a few players out through injury. Um, they've, all, they've lost Tommy Makin soon, but I, I don't think Connor will be playing this game, will he, Joe? Um, I don't think so, no. And you know, Connor could have been, Connor could prove the difference in this game because he does tend to, apart from that absolute shocker. Turn up against Leeds. Uh, Leeds? Against Saints. Uh, oh, do you know what? It's a tough one, this. It really is. Saints are... Saints are not firing. Saints are clearly not playing for the coach, but then again... They might have injuries as well, somebody told them. Have you got some injuries? No. I think so. I um, think so. Huddersfield have got injuries. Huddersfield have got a lot of injuries. Yeah. They... Both are wounded teams. Both were embarrassed at the weekend. It's, it's a difficult one to call. Where are you going? Go on. Go on. Giants one to eight. Ooh, that's a biggie. And you know night what? Night, everyone. See you next week, mate, night. The fa- mate, the fans form have gone Huddersfield Giants one to eight. Steph, over yeah. to you. I, I just think Saints are demoralised. They do. They do look a team. Completely lacking confidence and cohesion, I have to say. Yeah. Uh, Steph, your thoughts? Come on, can, can we get my daughter's comment on there? For uh, that, don't worry, yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've seen. I, I've, yeah. I've seen, I've seen. Um, I, I think it could be a really interesting game, this. I think you're absolutely right in terms of the comments in the in the forum. Uh, the Huddersfield are definitely going to want a response. That was embarrassing last week, embarrassing. And I'm sure at home... <laughs> there he goes. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? Ellie? You, you can tell she's my daughter. <laughs> well, whilst we're whilst we're on that topic, Ke- Kevin Calvert is the fourth new member at Super League Raw. There's your fourth, ladies and gentlemen. Ke- Kevin's gone in. He, he's he's gone in there. He's supporting what we do here at Super League Raw. He loves his Tuesday night entertainment. We couldn't do it without your love and support, Kevin. Thank you very much indeed. Steph, back to you. Uh, I forgot what I was saying now. Um, yes, <laughs> so, um, I, I think definitely at home, Huddersfield are going to want to apologise to the fans and put in a really, even if they don't win it, put in a really, really good. And the thing is for me with Huddersfield is they've got the potential, they've got the players, they can they can definitely give Saints a game in this one, um, and I think. Again, but going back to the conversation earlier on about Luke Robinson, um, th- this for me is, uh, if I was Luke Robinson, I'd be saying, listen, I- I'm going for this job. Let's let's put a show on for our, our fans here and-, and really go to show what we can actually do. Um, so I am I am predicting that Huddersfield... I'm not laughing and- at you, Steph. 
<laughs> no, no. I am predicting. I'm not reading the comments yet. I'll read it in a second. I, I, I'm predicting that we are going to see a bit of a performance from Huddersfield here. Okay. Um, uh, I think Saints are doing it tough at the minute, as are a lot of other teams. And I do think that Huddersfield have got the potential, if they want it, to to do a job here. Um, I'm, uh, people might see a, a theme with my predictions. <laughs> They're probably more hope than uh, actual uh, <laughs> expectation. But I'm going Huddersfield one to eight. Come on, the cowbells! Well, as you can see, Dawn Baker there. You know she's uh, she's not having it. That Huddersfield are udderless. She's she's all over it. <laughs> he's all over it. He's Dawn. She's going for the cowbells. I, I love Alex Sharp's comment. I'll, I will come to it. Let's get to let's get to Joel. Joel, mate, your side. What's your thoughts? I'm actually just very shocked that you all think that Huddersfield's even got a chance. Um, it'd be lovely. Um, I just don't see it. And the Saints most certainly can't play the injury card because on this one, because we've actually got more in injuries than they have. Um, though they'll tell you otherwise, of course. I, I didn't know Saints had any injuries. No, no. I just heard it on a, on a great van. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've I have gone since eighteen plus. Uh, I don't actually think we'll even score, um, especially the fact that Jake Connor is ninety nine percent chance not going to be playing. Um, that leaves too much work for Tui to do. Um, I think he'll probably have to play Kieran Rush, um, and he's hardly played. Um, do you know what, Don? I, I've just, I just say it as it is. I say it as I see it. And I've seen far more of Huddersfield than most people have. Uh, Greg Roach says you're talking sense. He believes that you're going to be hammered as well. But there is a split yeah. at the uh, the young ladies in the sale house because Darcy, uh, oh no, actually there's not. She's saying that Saints are losing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, that's, so. that's, that's my six-year-old. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> that's, 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 that's a six-year-old well, six Right, I'm very mindful of the time, so we're gonna we're gonna go through a couple of the chats. Also, Freddie McGilvery's in the chat. By all accounts, he's got a knee operation coming up. Freddie, from all of us here at Super League Raw, we wish you well with that, my friend. Uh, we hope yeah. all goes well, sir. Uh, outstanding. Make sure that you fully itemise all those gold chains before you take them off. You don't want anybody <laughs> taking them. Uh, <laughs> make sure that you keep hold of them, sir. Sure, on the MRI scanner, you'd be like this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, glittering gold. Nothing more for Freddie McGilvery. Uh, he's gone Saints 18 plus. Good man. Uh, Dawn Baker's going Giants 9 to 17. Ian's going Saints 9 to 17. Um, I'd say a bit of here and there, back and two. Um, yeah, interesting. The sale house, obviously, all Huddersfield for this one. I'm going Saints 1 to 8. I don't think you'd be that bad, Joel. I think Saints, like you, are devoid of confidence, mate. So I think that probably plays into your hands. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go Saints 1 to 8. I think they'll get the job done, Saints. I think they'll get the job done. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be easy for him. Right, like I say, very mindful of the time. Let's get down to the final game of the round. And this is a little uh, cheeky one as well. We saw that, you know, London Broncos, uh, you know, they've got it in them. They've got it in them. Don't worry about that. At home, 36-11 in favour of the Le Leeds Rhinos in Super League history. Uh, Leeds coming into this off the back of a win. Uh, in fact, completely opposite. Lost, win, lost, win, lost, win uh, for the Leeds Rhinos. So, win, loss, win, loss, win. And it's a loss, win, loss, win. Loss for London, complete opposites. I won't believe Both uh, games this season have gone the way of the Rhinos. The first one uh, uh, was a win at home for Leeds, 40 points to, to 36. Both of the first two games have been at Headingley. Who can forget the 17-16 game? That, let's be fair, London should have won against Leeds earlier in the season. They put a cracking shout up. 12 against Dave. Yes, every conceivable start is going the way of the Rhinos. 1-18 to 18. The Leeds Rhinos, I think that is, I don't see it 1-18. to 18. I think London will give them a proper game here. I really, really do. Uh, Greg, I'll start with you. Um, London against Leeds, where are you going? Uh, Leeds are a different different animal to the game that, that just scraped by early in the season. I'm so going Rhinos. Uh, say again, it's at so London, London, yeah. At London, but I'm going Rhinos 18 plus. Rhinos 18 plus, outstanding. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sale, you make my cackles. Can this be? Let's be fair, they beat Leeds. I think Hull FC lose to Cast, they could be off the bottom this weekend. <laughs> well, I've got an OFC answer. 
I've got another C one to eight. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll 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 see. I think this is um, it, it's another good, really good game. I think on paper. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> like, like I said earlier, with my predictions. Um, <laughs> no, do you know what? You're, you're right, Steph. The annoying thing is, these should be the games that should all be shown, not not putting them on a red button. Yeah, no, I, no, I agree. And these, I, I, at the end of the season, you should be having all the games shown. I yeah. just don't understand it. I don't understand the thinking or the philosophy around it. I really don't. No. Yeah, well, yeah, but we, we know David Sales on the case. He'll sort it out. So. I, I hope he does, mate. Does. Um, so, yeah, no, but it, it, I think it could be a really interesting game, this one. And I can't wait to watch it, actually. Um, I think it's going to be a... Based on how, how well London have been doing at the moment, especially down at their own stadium. Uh, and then I think they will 100% be targeting this one as one to leapfrog. Hull FC into the eleventh place. Uh, I know I predicted Hull FC and thinking, but they'll they'll be expecting Hull FC to lose. So um, what was he asking now? Steffi, I'm interested. Carry on. Watch it. Watch it. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm losing train of thought. Um, I went London one to eight. London one to eight. And Joel, your thoughts on this one? <coughs> uh, most of London's two hundred and plus attacking score that they've had have come from the way of the second half of the season. Um, so they are playing better, but Leeds are playing some wonderful rugby, so I'm going 9-17 for Leeds. 9-17 to Leeds. The fans for him have gone London 1-8. to eight. Interesting. <laughs> Gary Schofield's gone Just Leeds. Just to Alex up that. Yeah, Gary Schofield's gone Leeds 9-17. I'm going Leeds 1-8. to eight. I think it'll be tight. I think it'll be tight. Could be another golden pointer. Yeah, I think this could be a tight game. I really, really do. Um, Alex is going down to London to watch this one. So uh, safe travels, enjoy the game. Graham Parish leads 18 plus. Phil Webster leads one to eight. Joe Dal Green leads 18 plus. Ellie has gone Leeds one to eight. Close game. They have always said she knows a rugby league. She agrees with me. Good girl, Ellie. That's Better than a dad. That's what we're talking man. about. You only have to look at the prediction league, Ellie. He's doing terrible there. In fact, next year, Ellie, we'll, we'll have Ellie Sale on the Prediction League. You'll probably do better, sweetheart. Uh, <laughs> what, are you, what are you going for, Dave? Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Lee, what, Lee, sorry, Leeds, one to eight. I think it'll be a tight game. I think it'll be a tight game. Right, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, outstanding. Four new members tonight. Like I say, we need your love. We need your support. The last thing I want to do is put this private YouTube for members only. Don't want to do that. I'm just imploring you. Pleading with you, support us. That's all we ask. Support us so that we can bring this to you every Tuesday night. Uh, and of course, the members get the benefits that the members get from being members. They're going to have loads of good prizes and comps coming up over the winter months, of course, as well, uh, as well as the opportunity of joining us at the grand final. So loads of good stuff coming up for the members as well. But yeah, consider joining. Scan the QR code. Um, get into the chat of whatever you're watching, whether that be YouTube or Facebook or the podcast. The link is there, www.patreon.com slash Super League Raw. We're coming to the end of the season. We need your love and support because, quite frankly, I want to be back next season, but I want to be back bigger and better. And the only way I can do that is through investment and making this as good a show as possible for your viewing entertainment. So that's what it's all about. Uh, we're, we're building a great community. We love your company. Where else are you going to be on a Tuesday night, ladies and gentlemen? So all that's left for me to say is enjoy your rugby league this weekend. <laughs> Always welcome back to Joel. Great to have your company, mate. Uh, good luck against the Saints. Steph, really looking forward to the BBQ uh, and uh, everything that's going to happen on Friday. Mr Nixon, you'll be there as well. Uh, oh, yes. Right, with the families on Friday. And no matter who wins, let's hope that Rugby League is the winner when the Leopards go up against the Wolves. Bye, bye.